Their motto is, non nobis domine non nobis, sed nomini tua da gloriam. Not in our name, Lord God, not in our name, but upon thy name is the glory. Their leader, together with 100 men, confronted a king and pope, but lost. His curse reportedly led to the death of two of the most powerful men of that time. The Knights Templar, known as the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ, or the Knights of the Temple of Solomon, emerged from the shadows of history as a beacon of military might and spiritual mystique. Founded in the aftermath of the First Crusade, around 1119, the order was established by First Grandmaster Hugh de Payens and eight other knights. However, secret intentions were waiting to surface. They took up headquarters in the ancient Temple of Solomon. Now, Solomon himself is a mystic figure in history, often called a magician and an exorcist. Many amulets from ancient Greece are found with his name and seal upon it. Who knows what occult treasures they found beneath that Temple of Solomon? The Templar Knights took it as their holy mission to protect Christian pilgrims visiting the Holy Land, a mission which could count on much support from kings and lords from all over Europe, which started donating coin and lands to the Order. Donating to the Knights of the Temple became the fashionable thing to do. The roads from Europe to Jerusalem back then were invested with Bedouin raiders. The order counted around 300 knights and 300 squires in the year 1119, but that number would soon change. Their ability to transfer wealth across vast distances with security and efficiency was unmatched. At the heights of the power of the Templars, the order had 20,000 members. However, Templars' true mission might be for esoteric knowledge and sacred artifacts, such as the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant. They also tried to track down some more obscure objects, like the head of John the Baptist, the True Cross, which was used to crucify Jesus Christ, the Mandylon of Edessa, and the Crown of Thorns. This blend of martial prowess and mystical pursuit set the Templars apart from other orders of the time. Do you want to know more about these holy relics and their power? Support Spirit School by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That way, we know you want us to dive deeper into this subject. Did Templars practice Solomonistic, early Enochian magic, or even more occult? Another theory is they worshipped an ancient deity called Baphomet. Baphomet is a symbol of balance in various occult and mystical traditions, the origin often linked with the Gnostics and Templars, although often purported to be a deity or a demon. His followers call him the father of knowledge or the father of understanding. Although the might of the Templars in battle was almost unmatched, there came an end to the prosperity of the order. As the Templars' military foothold in the Holy Land began to wane, so too did their outward power and influence. Rumors persisted that the Templars, in their final days, turned to ancient texts and symbols, some of which bore striking resemblances to what would later be known as Enochian magic. King Philip IV of France's actions were caused by the fact his wars with England and Flanders caused him to always be short on coin. Already having done away with one pope by claims of heresy, the king's quest for money led him to hunger for Templar coin. Their end began in the early morning hours of Friday, October 13, 1307. Accusations of heresy and blasphemy, including the practice of forbidden rituals, were leveled against them. It's speculated that these claims were made up and the Pope had already absolved those charges. But that didn't stop King Philip from making a drastic move on the Temple Order, arresting all Templars that hadn't yet fled. The trials of the Templars were marked by forced confessions obtained under torture. Some scholars suggest that the Templars denying Christ and spitting on the cross were symbolic rejections of the Church's material corruption, not of faith itself. 
In their persecution, the Templars were perhaps martyrs, not just to greed and power, but to the loss of spiritual purity and esoteric knowledge. Messing with the dark occult powers is always a gamble, and in most casinos, the house always wins. The burning of Jacques de Molay, the last Grand Master of the Templars, he is said to have cursed King Philip IV and Pope Clement V, predicting their deaths within the year. This curse symbolizes the enduring power of the Templars even after death. Some believe that de Molay's final words were an Enochian invocation, a plea for divine justice. Whatever it was, the king died that year of poison and the Pope was struck by lightning and also didn't see that year's end. As the ashes of the last Templar Grand Master cooled, their spiritual and mystical legacy continued to thrive, feeding modern esoteric traditions with their knowledge and practices. The Templars' relation with the occult has had many theories sprouting up in the centuries that followed. They found its way into various secret societies and esoteric orders. The Freemasons, in particular, have often been cited as spiritual successors to the Templars, adopting similar symbols, rituals, and values. A mystery unveiled or deepened. The story of the Knights Templar forces us to question the boundaries between history and myth, between the seen and the unseen. Their legacy, imbued with layers of mystical wisdom, calls us to explore further to unravel the threads of the past in search of the eternal truths hidden within. Will the Templars' true spiritual and mystical practices ever be fully understood, or will they remain shrouded in the mists of time, an everlasting mystery? To be continued, what truths lie buried beneath centuries of legend and lore? Only time will tell, or perhaps only the brave and the curious will uncover the secrets that await. And now that you mention it, I knew you would make it to the end of the video. You are one of the brave and curious warrior scholars that we are looking for to help us in our quest. Join the Spirit School community and subscribe to the channel. We are aiming for a 1,000 subscribers and we are nearly there. We value all your input towards future topics. So let us know in the comments. Deus Vult. Subscribe and stay tuned for part two of the Templar's Mystic Saga.